highlights of the closing remarks for us? I don't know about a closing. <laughs> I'm going to start off by apologizing and saying thank you. I apologize for being the guy in the back kind of coughing and still have a little bit of a cough. And I want to thank you guys all for attending. Uh, but I also wanted to thank the folks here uh, on my team who have presented today. A lot of the stuff that they sort of glossed over that just works is a lot of hard work that they've all put in over the, I would say, three and a half, four years uh, that we've worked on this. And a lot of the bad stuff that they have glossed over is entirely my fault. Um, That's actually good. Yeah. <laughs> He'll be the first one to tell you. Um, you know, this all started at LinkedIn. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about strategy. Um, this all started at LinkedIn four and a half years ago, uh, or I should say five and a half years ago, when LinkedIn got hacked. Does anybody remember this? Raise your hand if you remember this. A little bit, right? Well, you remember that the LinkedIn passwords had gotten leaked, and uh, it wasn't a very proud day for us, but it, what had happened that you may not remember is that our corporate blog had actually gotten taken over as well, and just spilling all kinds of terrible things about us, uh, and that our blog had gotten hacked by the Syrian Electronic Army, who had posted a lot of propaganda on a corporate site uh, for a company who was all about professionalism. And so that's actually how all of this got started. Uh, I was hired to basically take those blogs in and secure them. I asked the question, is WordPress really the things that we want to stick with? And here we are four and a, four and a half years later uh, with all of this stuff that you've seen and, and more. Um, so I wanted to stop and say thank you to the team who actually made all this happen, probably despite me. Um, but I did want to talk to you guys about sort of like the strategy of using AEM here. So just by a show of hands, how many of you are uh, individual contributors actually working on AEM versus management or what I like to call overhead, like me? Um, so individual contributors? A few. Um, how about sort of management or sort of, yeah, okay. Um, and then just out of curiosity, how many of you are with AEM sort of consulting versus in-house? So let's start with consulting, okay? And then the rest of you, I assume, work in-house as sort of dedicated, you know, serving a function but using AEM. So uh, one of the things I want to bring up is, you know, both for consulting and, is, but especially if you're in-house, uh, it's important to think about sort of AEM is a third-party tool. And so if you've worked with it, you've known how hard it is, especially at an engineering company where engineers feel like they know it all and have built it all, uh, how to justify and talk about why we're using a third-party product. Um, we encountered this problem ourselves. LinkedIn is a very large engineering company with a very, very strong engineering culture. And whatever we don't build, better be solid. And we better have a great reason for using it. Um, so, you know, over the, the four years, we've done a lot of things to sort of explain ourselves and also to prove ourselves. Uh, I would suggest that, you know, if you haven't currently thought about like where AEM is going to go in your company for the next year, it's probably a good idea to go back and think about, you know, just think a little bit about how am I going to expand this and also what role is AEM and the things that we build upon are going to fit inside the larger company. You know, this is what enabled us to sort of be able to tackle things like, uh, you know, we're going to build this for the internal uh, folks as well. And we're going to build out an infrastructure team to work on infrastructure as a whole. You know, uh, I think we have 20 people on our team now, as opposed to one person, that was me, um, who was barely working, let's be honest. Uh, and there's three things I would suggest. Um, awareness, integration, and leverage. These are three things that helped us immensely. Uh, the first thing is awareness, which is, you know, talking about your, what you're building and, and you, your platform, talking about it as a platform, talking about it as a product. This is why we ended up branding this Inkwell, where some of the team decided to call it a specific name, because everybody was calling it Adobe CQ, and I was getting lots and lots of questions about, well, why are we using that? The questions went away once we had a name. I know that sounds silly, uh, but it's just an example of something to, to sort of think about. You want to build awareness of what you're doing on AEM within the, within the organization. 
The second thing, uh, I'm going to actually go with leverage, um, is to say whatever we started building, you know, we all know AEM is a kitchen sink. It contains everything you need to build out a lot of things that you want. And we start off sort of building for one function, but recognizing once you've sort of invested in it, being able to say, hey, we're going to leverage this for uh, our internet was very helpful. Even though we started off building mission critical uh, business sites that had gotten hacked and definitely cannot get hacked again, uh, switching over to say, hey, we're also going to start leveraging this for our intranet, which also happens to have a content management need. We're also going to look at, hey, are there digital asset management needs that we have in LinkedIn? Because CQ, you know, or AM can serve as a dam. Oh, we're also going to talk about maybe opening this up as a general sort of site builder for LinkedIn because, you know, for a company of this size, we have lots of people trying to build stuff. So leverage is very important and it served us well in the sense that we were able to actually you know, get everybody to work on more things together. Uh, the last thing is integration, and that's especially useful if you work at a company where the engineering culture is very strong. Right? Um, you know, several of the folks here, uh, again, gloss over the work that they've done, but it's been a lot of very interesting work tying ourselves to the LinkedIn tool sets, none of which, when they built this, was built with AEM in mind. Right? We don't use Oak, we don't use Jackrabbit, we don't use Sling in the native tool set. We don't deploy the same way. Nothing that AEM does is the way that LinkedIn did it. And so uh, we spent a lot of effort sort of building some integrations and tying ourselves into the LinkedIn tool set. So that kind of answers also what your question was, is why do you guys do so much custom? is because by doing so, we actually are now part of LinkedIn engineering. And it made it really easy when I started, when we started asking, well, what about SREs? Well, LinkedIn has a great SRE team, uh, like entire department. But they were like, what is this Adobe CQ? No, what, we, don't, we don't have the energy to support that. But we come back and say, well, it's on Inkwell. Uh, it's using the LinkedIn deployment system. Uh, we're using multi-product, which is like a standard sort of container system that a framework that LinkedIn uses. And suddenly the SRE is like, oh, sounds interesting. I like a good challenge. Yeah, we're going to go take a look at it. So now we're getting SRE support. Uh, other engineers are getting interested in hearing about this. So again, awareness, integration, leverage. I would encourage you guys to sort of think about that additionally when you're talking about your AM strategically. I guess that's all I had to say. I didn't really have, you know, these guys covered it much better than I did. Thank you again for coming.